on academy let's crack it what is the level of difficulty of this question uh, can we call it easy question everyone yes can we call it easy question <laughs> someone is saying level 0 <laughs> that's good okay but there is nothing like level 0 as such honestly i mean in cat also they ask you such question by the way so it will be called easy question the only thing is you had to define the values properly so guys it's about an examination so where we can assume the total marks we can assume total marks as 100 so that will simplify our task now what they are saying is there are four candidate a b c and d now a gets 40% of total marks so the marks received by a should be 40 40% of 100 is 40 yes and b gets 80% of that of a so whatever is score of a 80% of that is scored by b so what is 80% of 40 so guys it's going to be 32 have you all understood this everyone a got 40 marks and b got 80% of 40 marks that is 32 marks right now c get 60% of a and b's marks taken together so guys what is a and b's total it's 72 so what is 60% of 72 60% to 67s are 42 so can i say it will be 43 something theek hai if you calculate it will come out to be exactly 43.1 so c scored 43 marks let's call it 43 you know whether it's 43.1 43.2 doesn't matter so let's call it 43 for time being okay because we just need to do rough calculation and d gets 45% of a and c's marks now guys what is a and c's total marks to so can i say a plus c is equal to 83 marks approximately and we need to calculate 45% of this now guys what is 45% can we say 45% is 50% minus 5% so what is 50% of 83 Everyone, fifty percent of eighty-three is forty-one point five minus five percent of eighty-three. So please understand how do we quickly calculate five percent of eighty-three? So what you can do is you can calculate ten percent of eighty-three, right? Which is eight point three, and make it half. So guys, if I if I just make this one half, so what will be the value? Can I say four point one five? Do you all agree? So yeah, five percent is four point one five. So forty one point five minus four point one five. So can I say it's going to be what? Oh, sorry, this is four point one five, right? So forty one minus four is thirty seven. So can I say this is going to be thirty seven point three five approximately? So it's like thirty seven point four, right? Now the question is, if the required passing marks are thirty six percent, how many of these four candidates pass the examination? So guys, how many candidate have scored more than thirty six percent? So can I say it's A, C, and D? So three candidates have scored more than thirty six percent marks. Are we clear? So yes, definitely this was an easy question. You just had to make some accurate calculation, right? Now guys, one thing when you when you solve practice questions, when you solve DPP or whenever you do practice, avoid using calculator. Okay? Don't use calculator. unless the calculation is really complicated now what does it mean by complicated calculation so for example if you want to calculate say 34.5% of say 8167 now in such scenario maybe you can think of using calculator but once again if possible try to do it manually why because in cad exam the calculator is allowed but in other exam the calculator is not allowed second you will get used to uh, the calculator okay you will become uh, familiar with the calculator when you will be taking mock test right but when you are practicing so you can just think that you are preparing for all the exams not only cad exam are you getting my point so for such calculations try to do it in your mind huh don't use calculator sure now this was a nice question guys could you solve this question <clears throat> yes this was a nice question okay it's an easy question but it can trick you yeah okay so let's understand how to solve this question the answer for this question is 18.18% acha how many of you got 22.22% i'm sure there would be some students who must have got 22.22% did you get 22.22 yeah 
yeah that's that's a common mistake okay so let's understand read the question first so dipika sells her goods at a price 10% less than nidhi's that is nidhi's price but 10% more than gurpreet's price if a customer purchases goods worth of rupees 100 from gurpreet instead of nidhi he will say now guys here we are talking about a customer <coughs> purchasing goods worth rupees 100 from nidhi from gurpreet instead of nidhi okay so let's assume that nidhi sells the article at rupees 100 nidhi sells article at rupees 100 okay so can i say dipika sells her goods at a price 10 percent less than nidhi so dipika must be selling goods at 90 rupees do you all agree with this this is very simple now why have i assumed nidhi's value because a customer we are asked to find out savings when a customer purchase goods worth rupees 100 from gurpreet instead of nidhi okay so if nidhi's price is 100 dipika's price will come out to be 90 and in that case we need to understand what will be gurpreet's price that goods worth rupees 100 which is sold by nidhi at what price gurpreet would be selling right now gurpreet sells the goods uh, sorry it's mentioned dipika sells her goods at price 10 percent less than nidhi but 10 percent more than gurpreet's price now understand this part huh from this statement guys if gurpreet is selling at rupees x if gurpreet is selling at rupees x okay so can i say dipika must be selling the dipika must be selling at a price which is 10 percent more than x so can i say dipika's price should be 1.1x do you all agree everyone dipika sells the goods at a price 10 percent more than gurpreet's price so 10% more means multiplying factor is 1.1. So this 90 is equal to 1.1x. So guys, if I solve this, what will be value of x? 90 divided by 1.1. So if you solve this, you will get 81.81. Are you all getting this point, guys? So a customer who would have paid 100 rupees to Nidhi will require to pay only 81.81 to Gurpreet. So what is the same? Have you all understood this, guys? Come on, please confirm, everyone. Show me a quick thumbs up. Have you all understood this question? So, guys, how to tackle such question? This is something that you'll have to learn while practicing the questions. You know, this question can confuse you, can get you wrong answer if you start in a different way, right? Aryan, there was just a slight fluctuation from my side, but now everything is perfect. Okay, everyone, do you all agree? You know, audio video is everything okay? Please confirm. Show me a quick thumbs up in chat box. There was there's some lag from my side in between, but now it's clear. Okay, sure. Guys, uh, did you get an answer for this question? This is a simple calculation. 7000 will be the answer. Do you all agree? A company sells 60% now there is some issue guys continuously it is refreshing okay so just be there let me refresh my system once so that this continuous lag doesn't come okay be there guys i'm refreshing the system hmm. let's hope now the things will be better okay so guys let's understand how to solve this question everyone so pay your attention you know here since i i'm given certain number of items the number of items that he threw so i'll have to assume variable okay the total number of items total items i'm assuming as 100x you know instead of x i always prefer to assume 100x so that our calculation doesn't get, get into decimals right okay so guys out of this 100x items uh, it says that a co company sells 60% of the packed items. So there are total 100x packed items out of which the company sold 60%. 60% is sold, right? Matlab 60x items are sold and throw away remaining items. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so rest of the items are how much? 40%. So that is 40x. 
Now, out of this 40x, it threw away 15% of the remainder. So, out of this 40x, it threw 15%. 15%. So, guys, what will be 15% of 40x? Can I say 6x? Now, what is the remaining item? So, remaining items are 34x because 40x out of 40x, 60, 6x are thrown away. So, the remaining items are 34x. Now, out of this 34x, it sells 50%. So, 50% it sold and it threw remaining 50%. So, 50% it threw. So, what will be this value? So, it is going to be 17x. So what is the total number of items through by the company? Can I say 6x plus 17x, 6x plus 17x. That is equal to 23x, right? And we are told that the company has thrown away 1610 items. So I can say 23x is equal to 1610. Okay. So guys, what is the multiplying factor over here? So can I say 23 into 70 will be 1610? So 100x will be equal to what? 100 into 70. It's going to be 7,000. Are we all clear? Everyone? Right? So at the initial stage, at the beginning of the preparation, you should be able to tackle such question easily. Right? Make sure that you are getting 100% questions correct. Now that should be your target. When I give you such DPP, na, you know, to ensure okay, all your questions are correct. You are not committing silly mistakes. Right? Okay, let's take one more question, guys. For example, this one. This is also easy, right? The railway police caught uh, 4,000 ticket less travelers in January. So, 4,000 it caught in January. Then in February, the number rose by 5%. Guys, what is the multiplying factor for 5% increase? What is the fraction? It's 1.05 or can I say 21 by 20? Do you all agree, guys? one five percent increase means 1.05 or you can say 105 upon 100 which is nothing but 21 by 20. you can also think it this way five percent increase is what guys so can i say it's one plus one by 20 because the fraction for five percent is one by 20 so if it's increase it's one plus one by 20 so it's 21 by 20 now you should be able to do these things in your mind right so i'm doing in terms of fraction then due to co uh, constant vigil by the police and the railway staff the number reduced by five percent in march so now reduction of five percent can i say 19 by 20. if increase by five percent so 21 by 20 so reduction of five percent 19 by 20. guys are you all clear up till now just confirm once yes in the chat box have you all understood this fractions because these are very important right and then it further reduced by 10%. So guys, reduction of 10%, can I say multiplying factor is 9 by 10, 0 0.9 or you can say 9 by 10. Are we clear? So if you observe here, your this denominator is straight away 4,000 will get cancelled off over here. So we need to find out what is the product of this numerator. Now guys, what is last digit? Look at the last digit, 9 into 9, 81, that is 1 into 1. So can I say the last digit of the product should be 1? And there is only one option ending with one you really don't need to make the full calculation so you can go by last digit over here last digit guys is there any voice break in the audio everyone aryan so please check now your connection there's no voice break from my side okay right sure Okay, guys, this is a different question. So as I said, in DPP sessions in practice class, I will give you some extra question also. So everyone, please try for this question. This is a good question. Give a thought. Okay, you need to identify which of the following statements are true. Okay. Please try for this question, guys. <clears throat> this was not there in DPP, by the way. Just a moment, I'll come back to try to this question.
<clears throat> hmm. Okay, so let's understand guys how to solve such question. So <clears throat> see, um, you are given two statements. Statement one says 20% of X plus 30% of Y. Okay. And Unacademy. Let's crack it.